my name is Ayush Fresta. Uh, I'm a stand-up comedian. I've been doing stand-up comedy for uh, uh, attention. <laughs> That's true. Uh, we all want attention. It is one of our basic human desires. And it starts as soon as we are born. We cry and scream to our mother, almost like saying, hey, give me attention. Don't let me die. And a stand-up comedian is just a person who forgot to grow up. And since we cannot cry to our mothers, not anymore, we go up on stage every night in front of random strangers, and we use humor to basically say the same thing. Hey, give me attention. Don't let me die. Now, it has become almost a cliche to say that uh, comedians have issues, all right? Think of the depressed clown of Grimaldi and all the famous comedians who seem to have mental health issues, they seem to have drug abuse problems, uh, troubled childhood, troubled life in general, and that's true. Most of the comedians come from a rather dark background. Except for me, I do this out of sheer talent. <laughs> um, uh, when I started comedy, it was almost a way for me to not get bored after work. Uh, I grew up uh, listening to Gai Jatra cassette tapes from uh, people like Madan Krishna, Hari Bangsa, uh, Jitu Nepal, Manoj Gajudal, and the likes of those people. Matter of fact, my first comedy act that I performed was in eighth grade. Where I uh, prepared, uh, for a Gai Jatra, I prepared a five minute act. I went to the teacher and I said, I want to perform this. And the five minute was basically an imitation of what I heard in the cassette tapes, all right? Uh, I was doing my best impression of a comedian who was doing an impression of another politician. I had uh, silly lines in a Dohori song. I had a section of parody news, and that was it. And I don't even remember what I said at that time, but what I do remember is the attention. For a month, I was a star, but only in my head, because other people forgot it after three days. But I was very happy. And these people that I saw, like uh, Madan Krishna, Hari Bangsa, Manoj Gajurel, that I, the, the comedy act they did on TV and radio and stays, these people looked larger than life. I never thought I could be one of those people until I was introduced to stand-up comedy, uh, which is also done in large venues in front of thousands of people, but it's also done in front of a small stage, uh, in front of 20 people. This seemed doable. Uh, me and I had a friend who was as fascinated in stand-up comedy as I was, and he, we used to always say, yeah, stand -up parsa. we have to try it at least once. And just to be able to say that we did it, nothing more than that. Uh, we found out about an open mic uh, that happened nearby, and we said, yeah, we have to do this. And for a week, we, we wrote our jokes, we practiced, we gave each other feedback, we practiced, practiced, and the day came, we went to the open mic, and we didn't do it. We got scared, right? Because there were people, and they were reciting poems about oppression, uh, inequality, and stuff like that. I had a solid five minutes about masturbation. <laughs> so we didn't do it, but... Uh, we promised each other that next week we will do it no matter what. Next week we went again and we did it. It wasn't great. For 15 minutes, maybe I got six laughs. But for 15 minutes, I got their attention. And that was enough for me. And it, it was enough for me to do it again and again. At, at, at the open mic, there were three people doing comedy. The two of us and one guy who worked at the cafe. Uh, I had a Dutch friend. He was from Netherlands, and I, he was quite funny. So I told him and went to him and said, hey, you're quite funny, you should try the open mic. So he came and started doing it too. So there were four of us, and a few weeks later, the <clears throat> girlfriend of the Dutch guy told us, you, the four of us can do a show. I can convince bars and restaurants to uh, pay you for this. And I was like, bars and restaurants will pay money for my masturbation jokes. <laughs> Great, let's do it. And that's how we did our first stand-up comedy tour in 2017. So if you are wondering what it takes to start a comedy scene in a place like Nepal, the answer is a white girl. Uh, <laughs> um, in these three years, uh, 
comedy, I have seen comedy grow from uh, virtually nothing to become some, some kind of a phenomena, and I feel very lucky to have been a part of all this. Um, but today, I wanted to talk a little bit about what comedians do and, what it, what, and the effect it has on people and society. Uh, now, defining, defining comedy is a very counterproductive thing. There's a, there's a uh, joke that says, explaining comedy is like dissecting a frog. You know more about the frog, but the frog dies. And so let's try killing the frog anyway. Uh, the primary, a comedian has one job, and it's to make people laugh for the sake of entertainment, and that's it. We go up on stage, we say silly things, we do silly stuff, we try to grab your attention, we try very hard not to lose your attention. A comedian's whole day revolves around thinking, hmm, what would make people laugh? And where can I get free food? That's it. And <clears throat> you see, laughter comes from relief. The world is full of dangers, problems, miseries, flaws, paradoxes, things that don't make sense, things that defy our set of beliefs. A comedian takes these flaws, points out these flaws in a way that for a moment it seems manageable, for a moment it seems small. We take, we take problems of the world and we boil down it to its most basic form and ridicule them. And that gives people relief. Hey, I'm not the only one with these problems. Uh, we, take, we take potentially dangerous situations like talking about uh, politics, religion, uh, violence, oppression, and even sex, and we point out the flaws in them. We take away the power from that, and that's how people find relief in it. People, say, people feel safe talking about these things, and that's when they laugh. Like, falling off of a bridge is scary, but put on a bungee cord and you will laugh all the way down and up. The biggest laughters we hear is in roller coaster rides in amusement parks. These are potentially dangerous situations, but the element of harm is taken away, and people find relief in that. Watching a comedy show gives the exact same feeling. We talk about our general fears, our general anxieties, our general insecurities, but in a safe way. We take the power off of these things, and people laugh. Now to say that comedians uh, provide a service to, to the society is like saying trees are environmental activists. I mean, we do this for a living. We need the attention, we need the laughter, we need the validation so that we don't kill ourselves. Uh, social responsibility for comedians is unfair and an unnecessary burden. Uh, we are just entertainers. But having said that, comedians don't intend to change the society, but the effect that com comedy has on society and carving thoughts on people is undeniable. George, Co George Carlin probably made more people atheists than science ever did. Monos Gazurel played a bigger role in painting the ex-king as just a civilian more than any political parties. But why does this happen? There are two reasons. The first reason is that comedy is an excellent tool to spread messages. Ideas and ideologies, people are more receptive to them if they are said it in a funny way, with humor. We remember all the funny advertisements. Like there is, there is a quote that says, if you want to tell people the truth, better make them laugh first. Otherwise, they will shoot you. Um, the second reason is that comedy, by definition, lives in the boundaries. Uh, Comedy is an extreme mirror of the society. What people laugh at is an excellent uh, indicator of, of where the society is at right now. Comedians like to dance on the social boundaries and see how far we can push them. Because people will not laugh at anything less than that. And uh, so in order to fulfill our selfish need for validation and attention, we push the limit of what's acceptable in the society. And, uh, and as a result, the society moves forward. Now, uh, <coughs> uh, 
no matter what the effect of comedy is in the society, the fact remains that we are only entertainers. Uh, we do not intend to make any kind of changes. Uh, we are jokers, we are jesters. Um, all, what, whatever we do on stage is nothing more than a desperate attempts to be likable. We want to be hero for five minutes and that's it. And we hope that people don't figure out what we are actually screaming in the mic, which is, hey, give me attention. Don't let me die. Thank you so much.